Hey guys, T. Allen back with Digital Vector Studios. Today I'm going to cover another topic on DaVinci Resolve animation. This time I'll cover repeating or looping animation using the built-in tools in DaVinci Resolve. Looping animation obviously has a lot of benefits for creating motion graphics and other animation in Resolve. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm in the edit page now and I have a background layer already in place at the bottom of the stack on the timeline. So everything I put on top of this image will show up on top of this basketball court here. So today what I want to do is I want to create some repeating animation in Resolve and there's some tricks on how to do this. And so I'm going to use the built-in repeating animation features within Resolve that's going to save a lot of time. The repeating animation will automatically update. That's a cool feature in Resolve. And so I'm going to dig in a little bit deeper in Resolve and show you what it's actually doing in the background so you can use that for other ideas and options in your own projects. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna to wanna to go ahead and use an effect here, a fusion composition. So let's drag it onto the timeline. And it's gonna cover up that background because it's just black by nature. But while I have it in there, I'm gonna right click on this fusion and say open in fusion page. Okay, so it's just giving me a blank canvas here, which is really cool. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this basketball over here. And I'm going to connect it into our media out. So we can see this uh, PNG I have here. So it's a transparent background PNG. So what I want to do now is I have this, this media in. And you can see I don't really have any motion controls here. So I want to make sure I have a transform node into this flow area here. So let's go ahead and drag that down. And if I hold down the shift button, you can see that I get this option to just drop it and it'll automatically connect it in here. We have a transform now. I want to do a couple things here. So first of all, I want to make the size of this quite a bit smaller. I'll go down to about eh, 0.36 is good. And the next thing I want to do is start creating some animation. So let's go to the very left side of the timeline here. And the center point you can see is right in the middle of that basketball, which is what I want. Okay, so I'm going to start in the center of the screen here at 0 0.5, 0 0.5 for X, Y. And if I move these around, you can see that, that these will move. But I need to do some animation. So this little control over here to the right will start our animation. So I'm going to go ahead and hit a keyframe at that zero position on the timeline. Then I'll go over here to frame four. And I'm going to drop this down to the very bottom here of the screen. And you can see Resolve made an automatic timeline keyframe in there for me. We'll go to the next point. I think 17 will be good. And I'll just bring that back to 0.5. As you can see, Resolve did make these keyframe points in there for me, these little white hashes in there in the timeline here. So you can see I have that motion now just kind of dropping down and going back up to the original location. So that's pretty easy to do. And I could continue to make this animation along here. And obviously I could go back in the timeline and shorten my clip and then copy paste that, that little clip in there over and over to do this repeating. But I don't want to do that because I want to keep in my automation. So if I want to make changes, then I can easily go back in there and do that, which is really cool. So to do this, we're going to look at the spline editor and go ahead and select the transform locations here. So now you can see what's happening with our curve here. And if you want to manipulate within this window, you can just hold down your middle wheel button. If you have one of those, a three button mouse and hold it down, you can just move this timeline around. And if you hold down the control button, command on a Mac and roll your wheel, you can zoom in and out of this curve here. And if you want to just zoom to extents, you can just hit that button there. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I want to go over to the far side of the timeline at timeline zero. You can either just slide it over or go over here and type in zero. And so I have my points here in my timeline. So I want to go ahead and select all the points here. And then I have these options here at the bottom. So I want to use this set loop option or you can, you can do it over here or you can do it on if you right click on the actual clip here. Okay, so you can see what happened when I did that. This repeating motion came up here. Now if we go back to the edit window, you can just click this button or hit shift four. You can see we're just gonna get that nice basketball dribbling effect, just kind of going up and down there. So let's go back to the fusion page now. I'm gonna right click in this clip, say open in fusion page. And so the cool thing here is, so I have this animation 
and say I don't really like it is I go in here and I say, all right, let's go in here and ease this thing. Let's do a in quadratic. And so you can see what happens. So everything changed in all these repeating loops automatically for me because it's all tied together. Say I don't like that. It's kind of too slow coming out of this. I don't really like that. So I'm gonna just grab these two points and we'll make these, let's make these linear. And I don't love that one either. So I'm gonna grab this one and I'm gonna do an ease in, ease out. And I'm gonna kind of flatten that at the top there. And what's cool is then all these repeating animations are recreated from that initial animation. So that saves us a lot of time. And so to dig in a little bit deeper, you can see I have this transform node still selected. It creates this modifiers on there. So you can see what's happening here. And it, it created this displacement through this transform node. You can see it's gonna go from zero displacement at the initial and it goes to 0.5, which is halfway through our animation. And then it's gonna go to one. So we now have a path, it calls it path one. And so just that animation path itself is created there. And now we have this displacement. And so this is published out there for anything else that we wanna to add to it. Okay, so to wrap up, here's my final animation. And we created that very quickly using the repeating animation features built into Resolve. And hopefully you picked up something new with this tutorial. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them in the comments below and I'll try to get those answered for you. I appreciate your time watching today. Take care.